Let's learn how to set up Anaconda for Python on a Mac computer. If you're new to Anaconda, I have a previous video that talks about what it is and why you might want to use it if you're working with Python. This video is just going to be about the procedures of setting it up, and by the end of the video, we're going to run our first Python program using Anaconda. To get started, I'm going to go to anaconda.com forward slash download. It detects that I'm on a Mac, so I'll click the download button, and I could choose which processor I'm using. Uh, newer Macs are going to be the M processors. Older Macs might be running Intel. So the download is complete. I'm looking at my downloads folder. You could see the uh, package installer, so I'll double click that. I'll grant permissions to run the installer. This first screen explains what's going to be installed. I'll click continue. Here's some more general information you can skim through, but I'm just going to proceed forward and click continue. We'll agree to the software license. This is some information about where this is going to be installed on my computer. I'm going to leave it all as the defaults and click install. When it asks for permissions, we're just going to say OK. And we'll give that a moment to finish. And the install has completed, and you can see that Anaconda Navigator launched in the background. So to finish the install process, we'll just say continue and then close. We can move the installer to our trash. And let's do a quick tour of the Navigator, which is Anaconda's graphical interface for working with the features that Anaconda provides. Uh, here on the home, we could see a bunch of supplemental programs we might find ourselves using when working with Python. Uh, for example, uh, Spider is a very popular uh, code editor used often in scientific computing. Uh, for my purposes, I like to use VS Code, which is a more general purpose code editor, but it definitely has all the features we need to work with Python. And this is something I'm more comfortable with, but by all means, choose the code editor that you're most comfortable with. If you want to work with Jupyter Notebooks, which are a great way to share and document Python code, you could launch that from this homepage. Uh, and you could skim through the other options that are provided and see what uh, other programs you might want to check out. But I want to skip over to the environment section. This is one of the key features we get with Anaconda is the ability to manage different environments, which allow us to set up workspaces uh, where we can customize the Python related software we're using for a given project. And to visualize this, I'm going to pull up a graphic that I shared in the preface video to this video where I talked about what Anaconda was in general. Uh, and what I'm showing in this graphic is just a visualization about how when you're working on different project types, you're going to have different software needs. There's going to be different Python packages you're going to be using. You might even be using different versions of Python. And by working with environments, you can create these isolated containers for those different projects. So you don't have uh, packages or version numbers that are conflicting with one another. Uh, it also makes it easier to collaborate with other developers because you, you can actually share your environment so a colleague can have the exact same setup for a project. There's lots of benefits to working with environments and Anaconda makes it really easy to manage them. Now when we're in Navigator here in the environment section, we're looking at a visual interface for managing our environments. And you can see that we start off with a base or root environment. We have the option to create new environments. We could import environments, back up, remove all the things you would expect. Uh, and then for a given environment, we can see all the packages that are included with that environment. Now, a benefit of Anaconda is it comes preloaded with a bunch of packages that are really useful in the world of scientific computing. And so when you're skimming through the base or root package, you're going to see a lot of those packages listed here. So we could just start working within this base environment. But generally speaking, anytime you're starting on a new project, it's a good idea to create an isolated environment for it and pull in just the packages you're going to need in that project. Now, when it comes to creating environments, you have a few different options on how you could do it. Uh, via the navigator, we could just simply click uh, Create, give our environment a name. We could choose the version of Python we want. And then once it's created, we could use the navigator interface to search for and import the packages we're going to need. So that's option number one. Option number two is we could switch gears to command line. And we should have access to a command line program called Conda that came as part of our Anaconda install. And this is going to give us access to all of the things that we would do in the navigator when it comes to working with environments and managing our packages. We're just going to be doing it via commands. Um, and if you're not someone who works a lot in command line, this might seem a little counterintuitive why you work with commands when you have this nice visual interface. Uh, the reason is, is because at the end of the day, you're going to get a little bit more power and customization with the command line version. And also just as programmers, we spend a lot of time in the command line anyway. So uh, it's a place you're going to want to get comfortable, even if you haven't spent a lot of time there yet. So understanding that, let's get familiar working with the Conda tool. First thing we want to do is create an environment. We're going to do that with the Conda create command. We're going to include a flag called dash dash name, and we're going to name our environment. I'm just going to call mine demo. 
we're going to confirm the location where this environment is going to be installed. So I'll just type Y and hit enter. And then following the instructions it gives us, we can activate our new demo environment with this command. And now you can see that our prompt is prefaced with the name of that environment, just reminding that that is the environment we're working in. And the first thing we want to do in this environment is install Python. So when we're installing outside packages in Conda, we'll do that via the Conda install command, followed by the name of the package. In this case, that's simply just going to be Python. This is telling us about some other packages that are going to be pulled in that support Python. So I'm going to type Y and hit enter. And with that complete, we can confirm the install by running the command conda list. In this case, we want to list the details for that Python install. And you can see version 3.12.2 was installed, which is the latest version as of this recording. Uh, if for some reason you didn't want the latest version of Python when you installed it, you can include the version number as part of that command. The other thing we could do at this point, just to highlight how environments work, is if we run the command which Python, this is going to tell us which install of Python our computer is currently locating. All right, and you can see it's finding the version of Python that's installed in our Anaconda environments, specifically within that demo environment. But watch what happens if I say conda deactivate, that's going to get me out of the demo environment. So you can see my uh, prompt here is no longer indicating I'm in demo. And if I run which Python again, you can see it's found a completely different install of Python on my computer. And if we run the command Python version, you can see it's actually an older version of Python. So hopefully this emphasizes what environments do. It allows us to really pick and choose which software is running in a given context uh, and have full control over it and also vary it across different environments. All right, so let's get back on track. Let's get back to our demo environment. So once again, we're going to run conda activate demo. And then within this environment, we want to create our first Python script and run it. So I'm going to actually switch gears over to my code editor since I'm going to be doing some coding now. So I'm going to bring up VS Code, which is uh, my code editor of choice, but you could do this in any code editor. And what I'm going to do is just uh, create a new Python file. So I'm just going to save this on my desktop. I'm going to call it demo.py. Anytime you're creating a Python file, it's always going to end with a .py extension. So we're going to save that there. And just to get us started, we're going to do a very simple Python command. We're going to say print hello world, just to show that we could get this running. All right, I'm going to save those changes. And then coming back to command line to run it, I'm going to switch over to my desktop. And I'm going to run the command Python, followed by the name of the file I just created. So that was demo.py. And perfect, you can see it's outputting that hello world string. So that's a good proof of concept, but let's make this a little bit more interesting. I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video, and I have an example Python script we can run. It's down here under the heading Run Example Program. I've got a chunk of code. I'm going to click Copy, bring that into my code editor, and put that in my demo.py file. And what this code is doing is some basic web scraping. So it's going to go to accuweather.com and load the weather for this given location. And then it's going to scrape from that content just the current temperature for that location. Um, now, the reason I wanted to set up this example is because it uses two external packages to accomplish this. The first is something called requests. It's going to use that to actually make the request to AccuWeather.com. And then we're using a package called Beautiful Soup. That's what's going to be parsing the content we're getting from AccuWeather to extract just that temperature. All right, and this is a very common uh, thing you're going to see in Python scripts, where at the very top, you're importing some external packages or tools that you're going to be using, and then you have code that utilize them. Um, now, in order for this to work, I need to make sure that my environment has access to these external packages. If I try to run this right now, we're going to get errors. And just to show that, let me go back to command line. We're going to run, again run our demo.py script. And you can see it's uh, hanging up on that first line where we're trying to uh, pull in this package or module called the request. It doesn't see that in this environment. All right, so to fix that, once again, we're going to say conda install. And we're going to say request. That's the name of the package we're going to be pulling in. We'll say yes to proceed with the install. And then we'll do the same thing for that beautiful soup package. And then with those packages installed, let's run our script again. And perfect, there's our output. We were able to extract the uh, current temperature from AccuWeather.com for this location. So hopefully that little example just gave you a snapshot of the kind of thing you're doing when you're working with environments in Python where you create an environment, you pull in the specific packages you need for that environment, uh, and then of course you build your Python scripts to utilize them. 
Now, in that example, I just told you the name of the packages we were using. Um, if you are looking for packages, uh, there's a couple different resources you can check out. The first is condaforge.org. This is uh, where you can search for packages that are available via Conda. Or if you're using Conda, you also have access to something called PIP, which is another popular Python package management program. Um, and they have their own repository as well of packages that are available. So any of the packages you find on either CondaForge or PIP, you can install via Conda. But with that, I'm going to wrap up this example. And the last thing I'll leave you with is just a quick note that if you go to the end of the notes that accompany this video, I have a quick reference sheet of some common conduct commands you're going to find yourself working with as you're managing your environments and your packages.